Greetings, Star Wars fans. My name is Sam Witwer, and some of you may know me as the voice of Darth Maul, and I find myself in frosty Roseville, Minnesota, in front of the headquarters to Fantasy Flight Games. These are the folks that make all of the Star Wars board games and dice games and miniatures games, and of course, the Star Wars role-playing game, which is really very, very close to my heart. So why don't we all go inside and see what they're up to? You're all under arrest for violating Lucasfilm NDA. This is okay. Austin. <laughs> oh, no. in trouble. What's well, we knew it wasn't going to last forever. But... Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good run. It's a good run. <laughs> what in the hell are we looking at right here? That's Obi-Wan Kenobi. I know this guy. <laughs> Actually, I have an even more exciting the sculpt is amazing. Look at it's this. It's good, right? Wow. Yeah, the department's whoa, doing whoa, some whoa, amazing whoa. Clone Wars stuff. <laughs> Look at this smug little, you know? <laughs> man, <laughs> Wouldn't be Obi-Wan without so, his nemesis either. So arrogant. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, who's his nemesis? Uh, well, <laughs> one of his nemeses. That's an amazing paint job, by the way. <laughs> yeah, John did that. That's, uh, he's, uh, he's a master. How long did it take you to do Grievous? Uh, Grievous was about 14 hours. 14 hours. Yeah. One of the really exciting things about that sculpt, too, mm -hmm. is that he is going to come with four different pose options. Yeah. Like he's got the four lightsaber arm pose. He's got, he's the got his blaster out, like, pistol. <laughs> he's got the relaxation pose. Relaxation yeah. Pose. yeah. Sorry, I'm sorry. No, no, no. It's more important what you're saying is in my dumb jokes. Blaster pose. What else? Yeah, he's got the blaster pose. He's got the four lightsaber pose. He's got this with the cloak on, cloak off. We're, we're trying to push the amount of customizability of the game. And I think sculpting's done an amazing job with wow. that. Wow. Obi-Wan looks great. I mean, he's a jerk. Yeah, he kind of is. <laughs> but he looks great. I mean, that's my opinion. Right, right. Right. Oh, that's awesome. That's really beautiful. Now let's look at some clones. Oh, look at these gentlemen. Rotary blaster. Yeah, yeah, wow. How long did it take you to do these? About eight hours or so. So I think they're you know roughly a little over an hour each. They have better... Uh, Armor hygiene than the stormtrooper. They do. They keep it. They keep it correct. Yeah. I mean, those regulations. You, you never know when Rex or Cody is going to come by with an inspection team. It's cool to see those in physical form. Yeah. Because it's it's interesting how, to my mind, how much more realistic they look as a physical object mm -hmm. versus uh, CGI or, or in the films. I think that physically having them there, you can really get a sense of the scale of the armor. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. like what that actually looks like. So I think that's. Pretty cool. That's beautiful. Now here's something that's challenging. These guys who are so, <laughs> this is quite easily uh, the best battle droid sculpt I've ever seen. And we've seen a few, you know, over the years with gaming and stuff, they're very difficult because they're so mm -hmm. thin, right? A lot of advancements in technology, printing, uh, mold making, that kind of thing, uh, has let us do some really, really cool stuff with that. And it's a new type of plastic for Legion. Yeah. Like we were, we've been doing, um, a softer plastic mm -hmm. for our sculpts, and that is the first trooper unit in the same hard plastic that the uh, the vehicles come in, the ATST. And so it just it gives you a crisper amount of detail. Oh, it gives yeah. you more rigidity. Mm -hmm. um, we had to do it for the battle droids because uh, they're just so delicate. Where's your Darth Maul? <laughs> oh, 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 oh! <laughs> there he is. Well, he's not in Legion form. I was actually yet. making a joke. I was going to give you guys crap, but here, here he is flying his uh, his ship, his mm -hmm. the scimitar. Yeah. You know what's mm -hmm. uh, what, again the thing that I've been astounded with with your with your miniatures is that um, I've had occasion to uh, to visit Lucasfilm and see the study models. Uh, was at one point I got to check out the uh, archives and see the actual models that were used for Ep Four. And the question that I had for you mm -hmm. um, is. How does that make you feel that I've been in the archives and, and like... <laughs> so you just came, came here to rub that in mostly. What? That's that? No. <laughs> I'm, here to, I'm here to do some work, guys. I'm here to check this out. Good. Approved. Approved. Good, good. Um, I'm glad. <laughs> I just... Oh, God. I, I got to tell you, I love so much the, uh, the paint jobs on the uh, new 2.0s. Mm -hmm. It's really incredible. First of all, I want to point out that you... <laughs> got the TIE Fighter color right. Because everyone thinks, oh, they were white in episode four and they were blue in episode five and six. And that's wrong. Look at me. <laughs> wrong. <laughs> no, but they, because they were always, um, they were always this color. 
And what they had to do in Van Nuys at Industrial Light and Magic to get the scale right is they had to pour so much light on these models mm. that these looked white. They really did, but they were always this color. When I did visit Lucasfilm, I've actually seen some of the smaller scale X-wings that mm -hmm. they would use for, you know, zipping by in the background yeah, or something yeah. like that for these for the motion capture shoots. And I gotta say, this is like this is ILM quality. I'm not even kidding you. This is they wouldn't have built it this detailed for you know if they yeah. were able to build it at that scale. It's just extraordinary. Like, well, one of the one of the things that lets us capture that is that they have been good enough to give us those assets, give us access to those those pictures and stuff, so we can really nice. make sure that the fidelity is is up to snuff. It's really good. Well, thanks. Thank you very much for uh, putting up with yeah, my of nonsense. Thanks for visiting. <laughs> yeah. And I'm glad that you have uh, proved all of this. So now we yeah, can, yeah. Now we can get it to the factory. <laughs> this is, I think we're going to improve that. <laughs> um, I would like to see some more arms on Grievous. Okay, good call. So Good call. We'll make that happen. Awesome. Great. <laughs> Great. You're good. You're good. Hey, Adam. Sam, good how are you? Good, good. Who's that? Uh, Mr. Vader. Oh. Yeah. You, uh, you sculpting some Vader here for us? Uh, I'm sculpting. Looks just oh, like him. That's a, a spinning <laughs> image. Yeah. It's, it's my Cubist period. What is um, that? What are you doing? Doing a... Oh, you are piece. doing Vader. We were yeah. giving you crap and suddenly... You can do both. Yeah. Uh, and when you prototype, do you prototype down to the scale that you want, or do you do it a little bit bigger to kind of take a look at how it's catching the detail? We kind of do it at a scale. I, don't, I mean, uh, there's not... If you do it big, you're not really getting a sense of yeah, what's going on the table. Right. So. So what, as, a, as an artist, what um, characteristics do you exaggerate a little bit to, to sell certain items or to make things pop? Like, for example, a lightsaber, you know? Mm -hmm. You want that to, you don't want that to feel sickly or a little skinny. And if you had it exactly at the same scale of Vader, it might seem a little thin and insubstantial. It's, it's kind of a delicate dance. I mean, there's obviously things that are really important for all these characters to be recognizable, but right. then there's also the, the tensile strength and material and the scale we operate at. Right, exactly. Um, just with this product line, there's also sort of a, a style that we operate inside of, which isn't photorealistic proportions, but it kind of plays around with some stuff. And um, Right, you know, so it still reads as, as realistic proportions, but they're... Yeah. Your Soka. She looks really good. Thank you. Okay, that's approved. Awesome. Good. Approved it. <laughs> and what do we have over here? Wow. Yeah, so this is Whoa. a little... So here's the Vader he's stuff. sculpting exactly. right there. Yep. This is some American graffiti stuff <laughs> right here. It's a fully loaded land speeder. Yeah, yeah. These guys are... Um, yeah, they're they're cruising the strip. Is this, uh, is this how it was configured in Battlefront 2? It was, yeah. So that kind of design came from that game. Mm -hmm. and uh, we incorporated it in the Legion. These are incredible. So can I ask you a question? Yeah. Um, increasing the scale from Imperial Assault, was that done to, to pack more detail in? Absolutely. Uh, in a minis game, we wanted to provide a little bit better sculpts um, with more detail and more interesting mm -hmm. uh, poses. And uh, so that was one of the decisions that went into it. Yeah, I, I, I think it really comes through. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I painted your original set of Imperial Assault, and I'm, I'm just noticing that the details evolved quite a bit from what I thought were extremely detailed miniatures back then. I thought mm -hmm. I was really happy with them. No, these we were are, really up in our game. Yeah, these are next level. These are incredible. Oh, and this is a different Vader. So this is kind of a join me Vader. And then this is kind of a, okay, you didn't join me, and so I'm going to kill you. One hand is the hand of join me. The other one is the claw of I will destroy you. Uh, what? what? Yeah, so this is one of uh, the pieces of art that comes in, and uh, it's my job to uh, direct it in a direction that uh, matches the IP details and right. Um, and so you need my help to good. direct it. Oh sure. Okay. Uh, what would you like done with this? No, I just think that what you're get you're getting look you're getting how handsome he is. That's cool. That's good. But yes. are we really feeling how? good he smells. Not a lot of people know this. Darth Maul smells incredible. Would you like a, a waft of perfume? Off? I just think what would be really cool is if you just put like like a couple of girls like in the corner Whoa. going like, <laughs> oh, it's Darth Maul. Like, oh, ask his autograph. No, let's not bother him. He's about to fight Obi-Wan. 
there. Is that look at that? Is that much better? Perfect. Yeah. Approved. I I like. We did it. it. Yeah. Um, this is how I it's think, done. I, I don't know. I, She's not, so excited. Not to be uh, hypercritical of your your art direction skills, yeah. but I feel like you've ruined this piece. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. Okay, tell me about art. What's the deal? Okay, well, normally we wouldn't do that, but uh, yeah, basically we, we work with a lot of artists around the world, um, and uh, it's up to us to communicate to them and get them to produce the best art they mm -hmm. can. Right, so is this uh, for one of the card games? Yeah, uh, this is for Destiny. Mm -hmm. um, this is our current yeah. card well, game. Well, spoiler alert, yeah. this guy's Destiny sucks. Yeah, well, he gets cut in half a little bit. A little, well, Just a little bit. Well, that's not the only thing that happens. So. Yeah. How do you like Obi-Wan, by the way? Great guy. Yeah. It seemed like you were friends. <laughs> yeah, laugh it up. <laughs> <laughs> Can we get out of here, guys? <laughs> <laughs> so, what else? Show me more art. What, do you, what else you got? Uh, wow. Well, we have a bunch of secret stuff. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I can't show you that. Why not? Oh. Um, Awesome. Now show me some Starkiller ones. I got nothing for you. You're a jerk. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, the, the art for your games has always been really, really top notch. It's, and it's, you know, oftentimes, I mean, it's kind of like, uh, especially with some of the animated stuff, I've always enjoyed seeing the animated stuff depicted in a more photorealistic mm -hmm. style. So that's been really, really fun. So yeah, thank you for showing me all of these things. And yeah. thank you for not showing them. Because oh, yeah. We can't give NDAs to everyone in the audience, can we? Hi. Hi, Alexis, how are you doing? Hey, I'm doing pretty good, how are you? What are you doing? Uh, I'm actually working on putting the finishing touches on the foreword for uh, Collapse of the Republic. As you can see, uh, your Did face you is right there. Did you ghostwrite a foreword for me? <laughs> that's amazing. So I, was, I supposedly wrote all that. Yeah, supposedly, and that's even your signature. Do you, you forged my signature, that's incredible. Yeah, that looks no, exactly like it. I am pretty good. Man. How about that? Yeah. Good stuff. Well, thanks a lot. Yeah. See you guys later. <laughs> <laughs> um, tell me more. So this is the book that 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 I uh, I got a chance to look at this in, in a Google Doc. Um, is that an Umbaran right now, right there? Uh, yes. Cool. Yeah, that's we really tried to get through in the art that there are a lot of options for uh, player characters, um, Carcharodons and uh, Harches a species. So you can finally make a shark or spider person. Ah, that's true. Because I was sitting here nodding like I knew what they were talking about. I'm like, Karchishin? <laughs> and a hermit uh, I didn't know that was what they were called. The, they were talking about uh, uh, Trench. Trench and uh, Rift. And, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Who got blown, got Jaws, the Jaws treatment. Yes. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, but, poor uh, guy. Yeah, those are options in here. And uh, just lots of information for players and GMs for running game set in the latter period of the Clone Wars and the last days of the Republic. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're really excited about it. And uh, thank you again for for that, for letting us ghostwrite that forward. For yeah, no, no, of time. course. I actually wrote it, okay? Everyone off my back, immediately, immediately. <laughs> um, this is really, really cool. So how's it going, man? How's the, uh, how's the line treating you? <sighs> uh, it's big now. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's... Well, yeah, what do we have right, now? Look at this. Um, <laughs> you might want to check that out. Look at all that. You know what's, cool. what's fantastic about all of this, and it's something that maybe your average friend, fan doesn't understand, is that the role-playing game, the Star Wars role-playing game, has become interlinked mm -hmm. with the behind-the-scenes lore, the glue that holds all of the stuff together that you see in the movies, the behind-the-scenes lore, or what was that guy in the corner, and what was, yeah. what was he doing there, and you know, what was that spaceship that we saw only for a brief second, and all of that stuff. Yeah. The, back in the 80s, the role-playing game books were what established the expanded universe. They were the research manuals they gave Timothy Zahn before he wrote Heir to the Empire right. and that whole, you know, the Thrawn trilogy. And... I mean, to this, you can you can look in old role playing game books from the '80s and read about Imperial Inquisitors, mm -hmm. and read about turbo tanks and stuff that we never saw until 20 years later. And just so, and and I can tell you that going around Lucasfilm, your books are on their shelves for research, and you know it's oh, really kind of cool when <laughs> when you see that that role playing game thing. It's been implanted in Lucasfilm's DNA, and it hasn't, yeah. they haven't shaken that, which is great. For me, for my part, playing the Star Wars role-playing game when I was growing up was what made me a, a rabid mm. Star Wars fan. I mean, I was obviously in love with those three films, but that was a way to really dig deep, you know, and just 
fall down the rabbit hole and mm -hmm. never return. The version I've played actually every version of the role playing game mm -hmm. since then, and uh, you'll be happy to know that I, I like yours the best. So, <laughs> and I'm actually not not just saying that. I've said this before publicly that this is my favorite iteration. Oh, I because there there have been strong points on all mm -hmm. of them, but uh, I felt sure. like you guys really looked at all of the role playing games and went, okay, what works? What are we not crazy about? All right, let's take that. Let's take that. Let's take that. Now let's do our own thing over here with our own system and incorporate these elements, and I, I really appreciate that. Have you been a fan of Star Wars since the beginning? Is, <laughs> is that what uh, I'm getting? Yeah, I would say so. I mean, that's like one of like one of my, I think, maybe one of my first memories, if not the first memory I have as a child is being in the theater for, right. for Star Wars. I was three, so my dad took me there, and then my dad being my dad, just let me like run up and down the aisles. <laughs> Which is great for the yeah. other movie. Exactly, yeah, I'm sure yeah. it was really fun for them. Yeah. So where do you see FFG's Star Wars brand going in the future? Well, a lot of that depends on where Star Wars goes in the future. Um, I think we've covered we've covered a lot of ground so far, and we're finally getting to the Clone Wars, which is great. Uh, so we'll be doing more of that and exploring right. that space more. Uh, but I, I'm looking forward to seeing you know what Episode Nine looks like, and you know what the Mandalorian looks like. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what comes, and hopefully we'll be right there with it. So I got a chance to tour the studio today, and now I finally get to look you in the face and ask you no stop it what does it take <laughs> what does yes. it take to make a great star wars tabletop experience well in my experience here uh it's really come down to a group of people who really love the setting and uh most of us have grown up with it um it means a lot to us on a like on a very personal level you really need to just immerse yourself in it um, find all of the good thematic bits you want to pull out of it to put into a game and then marry those to uh, quality mechanics. Um, and I think that's really the hallmark of all of our Star Wars games is that they feel they feel right. They feel like feel Star like Wars. Star, yeah, yeah, I, like I, X-Wing, Destiny. They, they the the role-playing game. I mean, yeah. for, for, for my money, um, you really do... With an RPG... You're telling a story with your friends. Mm -hmm. If the mechanics don't push the right kind of storytelling or the right, right kind of improv, right. uh, it's not going to feel like what it is that you're trying to do. Right. It's not going to be the right story. Right. It could be a good, cool game, but it might not be the right game for Star Wars. So your RPG, I, I'm happy to say I've played a lot of it, and, and I think it, it totally hits the mark. Awesome. Yeah, I think that that system really allows uh, for fantastic Star Wars storytelling. Yeah, and it's it's fast. It's mm -hmm. lean where it needs to be and then, you know, has some depth where, you know, where the players want it. So right, exactly. Yeah. yeah, it allows you to tell stories if you want and, and also it, if for people if you just want to just go with straight mechanics, it allows for that too. Yeah, it also allows uh, in a recent book to uh, gaze lovingly at the stats of Darth Maul <laughs> uh, which are considerable. And well, good. They're yeah. they're good. Uh, everyone's going to leave with their life today. So okay, it's, well, it's all good. It's fine. That's a relief. Well, Sam, we really appreciate you being here, coming out and doing these interviews. Yeah, you guys and are very patient. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Uh, and to show our appreciation, uh, the staff and I uh, got you a gift. This, whoa! 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 This lovely that is ball painting. Really, really good looking. And with the Sith Temple in the background, too. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, you this is uh, this, um, what I need in my life are more pictures of me. <laughs> no, this is amazing. Thank you so <laughs> yeah, much. This is so wonderful. And thank you so much for, uh, again, letting me wander the halls and harass everyone that works here. Yeah, I hope you had fun doing that. I had fun here. I'm not sure if they did, but I definitely oh, did. I'm, I'm sure they so, have. But again, thank you so much. This is really, really You're amazing. Welcome. Um, I love the art of uh, your company. Thank it's you. so amazing. That was tons of fun. I want to thank Fantasy Flight Games for having me, for letting me invade their hallowed halls, and uh, may the force be with you. <laughs>